Dr. Young Mee Kim is joined the Dr. Department Young of Mee Asian Kim. Studies at the University of Edinburgh as a senior lecturer in Korean studies in August 2017. And prior of this, Dr. Young Mee Kim was an asso associated professor of international relations and public policy at Central European U University Budapest. And now I would like to hand over the microphone to Dr. Young Mee Kim. Please, Dr. Young Mee Kim. Thank you for your introduction. Um, let me introduce Professor Yong Ho Kim, who will give a welcome remark. Um, Professor Yong Ho Kim is currently serving as a president of Yumbo Sun Institute for Democracy since 2021, also working as the editor in chief of Asian Brief, online weekly issue published by Asia Center at Seoul National University. Please welcome President Yong Ho Kim. United Kingdom, I must say that good morning everyone in UK and good evening everyone in South Korea. It is my great honor to present my welcoming remarks at Yunbosun Memorial Symposium co-organized by the University of Edinburgh and Yunbosun Institute for Democracy. On behalf of my institute, first of all, I would like to express my heartfelt thanks to all the participants, including Dr. Mathison, Ambassador Smith, Professor Young Mi Kim, Ambassador Taesik Lee, Ambassador Geun Kim, Mr. Sang Gu Yoon, and uh, Professor Young Ho Jo. As you know, eight years ago, we started this symposium in honor of Republic of Korea's former president, Yun bo -sun, who studied anthropology at University of Edinburgh from 1924 to 1930. It is no wonder that his experience of British democracy during his stay in Edinburgh became the basic guideline of his lifelong political activities pursuing democracy and political freedoms under authoritarian government in South Korea. In this regard, I appreciate the University of Edinburgh, which provided him with uh, the foundation of his strong belief in democracy and political freedom. Thanks to democracy movement led by Yun bo -sun and other political leaders, South Korea finally introduced the democratic political system in 1987. Over the past three decades, South Korea has successfully implemented democratic politics. However, South Korean democracy is not perfect and uh, still fragile. So my institute is trying to find out the way of consolidating and deepening South Korea's democracy. In addition to honoring the former president Yun bo -sun, this symposium intends to extend the exchange of views held by scholars and uh, experts of the two countries on a variety of issues, including domestic and international politics, economy, social life, culture, and uh, science and technology. This year, 
we selected the new agenda for South Korea UK cooperation in the COVID 19 era as the main topic of this symposium. As you know, the COVID 19 pandemic has been significantly changing people's daily life in the world. Under this situation, today and tomorrow, we are talking about some issues related to new political economy, international development cooperation, and US-China strategic competition in the, the COVID-19 era. I hope this symposium will contribute to facilitate the strenuous efforts of South Korea and the UK governments, which are trying to bring our daily life back to normal. It is my desire that this symposium is also contributing to the promotion of bilateral cooperation between South Korea and the United Kingdom, which are confronting similar challenges in the COVID-19 era. Lastly, but not the least, I would like to emphasize that this symposium is one way of helping University of Edinburgh advance Korean studies program. As you know, University of Edinburgh created Korean studies program and recruited Professor Youngmi Kim as a senior lecturer for the program in 2017. I am very delighted to see that the university's Korean studies program is slowly developing. For example, in early September this year, more than 100 early career researchers and uh, graduate students who came from not only the UK, but also many countries in the world, participated in the big conference on East Asia. Under the leadership of Professor Youngmi Kim, I hope my institute will continue to help University of Edinburgh develop the Korean studies program. Finally, I would like to express my gratitude to the staffs who have diligently prepared for this program in the hybrid form of online and offline. I hope you enjoy this symposium very much. I will stop here. Thank you very much. Thank you for the welcome remarks, Professor Kim. And next, Professor Peter Madison, Principal and Vice Chancellor of the University of Edinburgh will give an opening remark. Professor Peter Madison took over the Office of Principal and Vice Chancellor of the University of Edinburgh in February 2018. He was formerly the 15th President and Vice Chancellor of the University of Hong Kong. Please welcome Principal and Vice Chancellor Peter Madison. Thank you, uh, Young Mi, and uh, good morning from Edinburgh and good evening to uh, South Korea. So we're um, sorry that we're not meeting physically either in Edinburgh or in uh, Seoul. It's very difficult to find hotel rooms in Scotland at the moment because of COP26 uh, mm -hmm. taking place just 44 miles from where I'm standing. So um, we uh, um, maybe chose a good moment to have a hybrid conference. Uh, but we're very pleased to see our friends and colleagues from uh, from Korea and uh, and to continue this excellent relationship that we have between our 
universities uh, and, our, and our people and our countries. Um, so, uh, Professor Kim, Excellencies and Ambassadors, colleagues, friends, um, uh, just a few words of welcome uh, from me. Um, we're very proud at the University of Edinburgh of our alumni. Um, uh, we are an old university. We've been around for 430 odd years and uh, we uh, have many uh, alumni around the world, but few have been as successful or as distinguished in their career as, as young Po Sun. So the idea that we uh, were the educational alma mater of somebody that became a head of state and influenced democracy in the ways that he did is something that we gives us a lot of pride. And so uh, of the many reasons why I'm interested to support this institute and this partnership uh, is to pay respects to one of our very distinguished alumni. And you will also be aware that uh, in 2019, soon after I arrived here, um, we honored uh, Yun Sang-ku, um, uh, son of Yun Po Sun, uh, with an honorary degree. So we've continued our connections with the, with the family. Um, the topics that have been chosen for today's symposium are enormous and significant. And I just wanted to make a couple of remarks about the extent to which universities like the University of Edinburgh uh, and indeed uh, the fine universities in South Korea are influenced by external events. It, I've often said in my last few years, particularly when I worked in Hong Kong, but also when I worked uh, here in Edinburgh, that life would be simpler for universities if we didn't have to be affected by external events, by political shifts, by international relationships and their ups and downs, uh, and in the recent history by a pandemic. But of course, if we want to be socially significant and economically significant organizations, we have to be responsive to these events. We have to lead the debate. We have to be the places where the discussions take place about how we should react to such events. And the pandemic is a very good example. Universities all around the world including in Scotland and in Korea, have uh, led the scientific response to the pandemic. We've had our scientists studying the virus itself. We've come up with drug treatments and vaccines and diagnostic tests. And we've also had uh, academics studying the social and economic and political consequences of COVID. And I think there will be textbooks and PhD theses written for years to come on the ways in which universities and uh, academics contributed to the management of the pandemic and the extent to which evidence and policy were linked. And this is an interesting topic for me because my background is in medicine and although, although I am not an expert on viruses or on public health, I followed this intersection between scientific advice and the development of policy with great interest. I think it's been a very interesting period for the linkage between universities and society and politicians. So to pick these three topics, the relationships between the United Kingdom and the Republic of Korea in the period after Brexit, uh, then the new political economy in the aftermath of COVID-19 and the ways in which COVID-19 has affected all of our lives. And thirdly, the massive topic of United States-China uh, competitions and the relationships between the United States in the uh, period uh, since uh, the switch between President Trump and President Biden. Uh, President Biden is in Scotland this morning. Um, I saw pictures on the television news this morning of his uh, cars uh, moving between Edinburgh, where he's staying, and Glasgow, where the conference is. Uh, so we have a lot of very significant people in Edinburgh at the moment because of COP26. Uh, so this is a good time for the symposium to be thinking about these massive issues that we wish to influence, we wish to understand, and we wish to uh, maximize the impact of our partnership to try and contribute to uh, the, the way forward in the face of these external challenges. Um, I had the pleasure of hosting uh, Ambassador uh, Gun Kim uh, in Edinburgh uh, very recently uh, with uh, Young Me. Um, uh, and uh, I was pleased that Ambassador Kim made one of his first uh, visits uh, around the UK 
uh, after he's arrived here and after he's uh, able to travel because of COVID. Um, uh, one of his first visits was to Edinburgh and I was very pleased to meet him and to host him here. And I think, again, this is another example of the strength of the partnership between the University of Edinburgh uh, and the Republic of South Korea. So, so um, thank you very much for all the organizers of today's symposium. I know uh, Young Me has done a lot of work uh, on the Edinburgh side and uh, colleagues here. Uh, and I know that there will be many people in Seoul uh, that, that have also uh, worked very hard to put this symposium together. I wish you every success, and I hope that we'll be able to meet physically again before too long. Um, but in the meantime, uh, we can work across the miles and across the time zones. We can effectively collaborate. We have well-formed relationships and good understanding of the different parties. And so I think this is the basis for a very successful continuing collaboration. And uh, with that, young me, I wish everybody a very enjoyable uh, um, symposium, uh, and I hope that some new friendships and some new knowledge will emerge in the next couple of days, and we will continue the success of this relationship. So thank you for giving me the opportunity just to welcome people. I'd prefer to be doing it uh, in person, but uh, online has to be the way for the moment for us, uh, and I hope to see you all soon. Thank you for the um, opening remark, Professor Peter Matheson. And next, Mr. Simon Smith, UK Ambassador to the Republic of Korea, will give a congratulatory remark. Ambassador Smith, Simon Smith is a British diplomat currently serving as Britain's um, Ambassador to the Republic of Korea. Mr. Smith attended Wadham College, Oxford to study German and French, gaining BA in modern languages in 1990s, sorry, 1980s. Please welcome Ambassador Simon Smith. Thank you very much. President Kim Yong-ho, Principal and Vice-Chancellor Peter Matheson, my dear friends, Dr. Yun Sang-gu and Ambassador Kim Gunn, my esteemed colleague, Ambassador Ite Shik, distinguished participants, everybody, Good evening, good morning. It's a great pleasure for me to offer my congratulations on the opening of the 2021 Yun Posen Memorial Symposium. Our themes this year focus closely on cooperation between the United Kingdom and the Republic of Korea. And I'm really pleased to note that 2021 has been a very special year for that cooperative relationship. In the British Embassy, we are as good as certain that this is the first year ever in which the President of the Republic of Korea has paid two separate visits to the United Kingdom. In June this year, we were thrilled to have the opportunity as the presidency of the G7 to invite President Moon Jae-in as one of the special guests to the G7 summit in Cornwall and it's been a year in which South Korean representatives have participated in many of the strands of the G7 process and many of those at ministerial level. And right now, President Moon uh, is, as I speak, in Scotland. Uh, and his personal attendance at COP26 in Glasgow comes at the end of a year in which there's been an especially close partnership between the UK and Korea on our approaches to climate change. There's been a broad range of dialogue between decision makers from government, from civil society, business and finance from both countries as we've together looked ahead at how we tackle the challenge of comprehensive energy transition, the challenge we have to take on in order to ensure that we stop the progress of global heating and that we steer away from a climate disaster. And we've looked and learned together at how we embrace the huge opportunities that this change will offer us to develop our economies in the ways that will bring us sustainable success and prosperity in the future. And I've personally been engaged intensively on this agenda with legislators, with ministers, with business and community leaders in Seoul and all over the country. 
as we shared our perspectives on the policies and the technologies that we'll need in order to achieve the goal that we share of a carbon neutral economy by the year 2050. Now looking back at the G7 summit, this was the occasion for the leaders of all 11 countries participating to put on record their strong shared commitment to open societies, democratic values and multilateralism, to open markets, to fair competition and the rule of law. Now this overarching statement from the G7 summit, uh, which was uh, unanimously adopted and included obviously the uh, the, uh, the uh, agreement of the, the four nations invited as guests to the summit, this statement with its explicit commitment to working together to create an open and inclusive rules-based international order for the future, I'm sure this will remain a very valuable guiding text for the UK and South Korea as we deepen cooperation even further in tackling the challenges of the 21st century. But this has also been a year in which we've looked together at security challenges, a year in which despite serious logistical obstacles, we were able two months ago to take a considerable number of Korean decision makers out to sea some 60 miles offshore to visit Britain's newest aircraft carrier, HMS Queen Elizabeth. And this visit left me further convinced that cooperation between our armed forces and our defense industries is another fruitful area in which the UK and the Republic of Korea can go forward together. Now this year's Yunpasun Memorial Symposium puts a well-chosen focus on three areas in which I'm sure Britain and Korea will have a great deal to say to each other and I hope that those who lead and participate in the discussions will identify yet more opportunities that Britain and Korea can explore together. Thank you very much. Thanks for the congratulatory remark, Your Excellency Mr. Smith. Mm, next, Mr. Kun Kim. UK Ambassador of the Republic of Korea will give a congr congratulatory remark. Mr. Kim was appointed as the Ambassador of the Republic of Korea in July 2021. Ambassador Kang Kim will deliver a congratulatory remark in a video, unfortunately. Uh, please watch the video. Principal and Vice Chancellor Peter Mattison, Excellencies, Distinguished Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen, I am pleased to join you today for the 2021 Yunboson Memorial Symposium. I wish to express my sincere gratitude to all participants who are joining online. I am confident that you will give us thoughts to further strengthen Korea-UK relations. And I wish to thank the University of Edinburgh for kindly hosting this event. I also thank Yoon Boson Memorial Association in Korea for their unwavering efforts in promoting the former president's legacy. Last month, I visited the University of Edinburgh and gave a lecture on Korea and the UK. Over 100 students participated in the lecture and raised sharp, incisive questions throughout the session. Their questions were not only confined to relations between our two countries, they were also extended to global issues such as Quad, China, Japan, and the Indo-Pacific. I was deeply impressed that these young scholars and students were so interested in Korea and its view on global issues. Let me briefly touch on the past and current status of Korea-UK relations. The UK has been a long-standing friend of Korea. Our diplomatic relations date back to 1883. Since that time, our two countries have developed a close partnership. And as you are well aware, British soldiers fought alongside us during the Korean War in the 1950s to defend our freedom, for which we, the Korean people, are still tremendously grateful. We have come a long way since then, 
And in recent years, we have become closest than ever as we share our core values of democracy, market economy, and human rights. We have also seen remarkable growth in investment in recent years. I have high hopes that our economic cooperation will grow even further as we are well prepared for the post-Brexit era, thanks to the ROK UK FTA. Culture and people-to-people -people exchanges have also witnessed a phenomenal boom. Koreans love dramas and music from the UK, such as The Crown and Coldplay. K-drama and K-pop exemplified by Squid Game and BTS are also loved by the British people. Recently, Coldplay and BTS collaborated in a music video titled My Universe. It is beyond merely enjoying one another's culture. Rather, we are collaborating and creating new things together. So it is noted that this is the start point of a new phase of cultural exchanges. This year, we have witnessed remarkable progress in the relationship between the two countries. Last September, Korea and the UK set up a vaccine swap by sharing over 1 million COVID-19 vaccine doses. It enabled Korea to have earliest access to life-saving jabs and contributed to a joint effort to fight against the global pandemic. Furthermore, President Moon Jae-in visited the UK twice this year for summits hosted by the UK government. They were the G7 in Cornwall and COP26 in Glasgow. This further demonstrates our relationship is becoming stronger than ever. Ladies and gentlemen, it has been almost four months since I came here as ambassador. As I manage my daily schedule, I continuously ask myself, in the post-COVID era, what are the areas of cooperation and focus within Korea-UK relations? What challenges will we face and how do we best jointly address those difficulties? In this regard, I find this symposium to be highly timely and relevant, given its title, A New Agenda for South Korea-UK Cooperation in the COVID-19 Era. And I would like to highlight the role of the Yun Bosan Memorial Symposium. It has been making a strong, valuable contribution to the sharing of knowledge between scholars and enhancing mutual understanding between us. It has been making a strong, valuable contribution to the sharing of knowledge between scholars and enhancing mutual understanding between us. It has been broadening its scope with time from primarily focusing on political issues to expanding to cultural and historical as well as social and economic issues. I hope that the rich discussions of these two days will provide us with valuable insights on how to go forward in the post-COVID-19 era. Thank you for your attention. Thanks for congratulatory remarks by ambassadors for, uh, from both countries.